All right, welcome back to part 5.2, and we're going to pick up exactly where we left off, which is just when we copied um, our example 4 and call it example 5, but we didn't make any changes, so let's get into it. Okay, so in exercise 5, we're going to um, add a few things to our client certificate and our um, root certificate. So let's before we do that, let's sort of examine our two certificates. And we'll do that from the command line. So they're right here. So and so what we're gonna do is we want to take a look at our certificate. And so we can do open SSL X509 sub function and we want to say print out the text of our certificate and the certificate we want to print out is specified with the minus in parameter. And so that's going to be my ca.pem. We press enter. We can see it dumps the certificate, which is actually the contents of the certificate itself. Um, if we didn't want it to dump the contents of the certificate, we could say a minus no text, I believe, is how we do that, or no out, no out, something like that. Yep. And then um, it doesn't dump the certificate. So if I expand this a little bit, uh, you can see, of course, it says certificate. Um, you know, we have the version. Um, the issuer is Omnitrust. The subject is Omnitrust, so we know it's a self-signed certificate. We have the public key information for a certificate. We have a signature for the over the entire certificate itself. Okay, that's fine. Um, if we now take a look at our host certificate, so it's a host that pem, and we also run that, and we scroll up a little bit. To compare the two and you can see that um, they look very similar right um, except for the issuer here being omnitrust and the subject here being our host name um, other than that they look very different so you can tell by looking at these certificate which one is really a certificate how it should be used in other words and we don't have any signature here or key id for to help verify like you know the um, like a fingerprint for the public key and the public key of the owner of the certificate or the public key for the signer of the certificate right and so so this is the signature algorithm here and this is the public key and so what we're going to do is add to our public key or um, signature and for the private key we will do the same thing and add a basically like a ID. And so the way you do that in code is by, let me go here and it sort of doesn't matter where we put this function. In our CA, we can do a new file and we'll call it key ID, key ID. Oh, well, I was given these lowercase name, uh, doesn't matter. Key dash ID, let's go. And p package main, and the function is very simple. If you say get key ID and it takes a key, which is an RSA, a private key, public key. And so we want a signature, or if you think of it like it's sort of like a digest to represent um, the public key, right? And so what we can do is say buff colon x509. And remember, we can marshal a key. So now we're going to marshal the public key into a set of bytes, which will be this key. Now we have a set of bytes to represent this key. Well, the ID for this key is just if you calculate a checksum over those bytes, right? We have done this before. So we calculate the checksum over this byte and we simply return it. And um, if you remember, the checksum returns 20 bytes. And so by doing it this way, I just say return a slice of bytes as, instead of an array of 20 bytes. That's all there is to it. And that's it. That's our key ID. This is how we create a checksum over any public key. And so now we can go back to, let's say, our issuer code and go down to where we are creating the certificate for our issuer which is here, and we shouldn't probably create a 10 year certificate for our host. We should probably do like a year or two. But one of the other things we can do before we create a certificate is we can say issuer that um, ID. And so we can do subject key ID, right? And so that would be the get key ID, and we can now pass in the public key for our 
um, which is creates okay I actually click on the issuer <laughs> um, so we can do key that uh, address that key that public key that and the other thing we can do is issuer that authorized key ID and so since this is also since this is the issuer its public key is has this signature and it's um, the authorizer or the key the ID of the person who authorized this key is also this very same um, this same public key so we can do that and public key right because the issue when we do a self sign certificate we're doing both sides of it right and so we can set both the subject key and ID and the authorizer key ID and then when we are talking about the client which is what I thought I was actually editing um, so let me go back and say for the issuer we do want to do like 10 years so I want the issuer and for clients we should give them a certificate for a year have them come back every time um, after a year and then for the client we want to do set the subject key ID and that's going to be get key and we just want to do key because here we have already the public key for that um, client okay so it's got client key right. okay so that's just another field that we're setting on the serve kit when we're creating it and so if we go back to our code here now and we go back and then we go up to exercise five and then we go down to my ca and we run it and so what i'm going to do this time is get rid of all the pem files so i'm going to get rid of all started pem files we don't have any now and all we have is our code and so if i do go run create key for this host i should see that it's going to create a private key for the CA then a CA cert and then of course it creates the forgive the noise outside and then of course it creates the host key and so on and then if I do open SSL and I look at my personal this um, CA cert now you can see that it has this extension subject key identifier so again these are the bytes that uniquely identifies the public key for this um, the subject but of course the subject and the um, authorizer are the same so that's why we see the same value here but now if we go over here and of course we have to go to the right directory so if I go back up and then up and then five and then my CA and then now I do open SSL and then I look at the host key we should see that here the authorizer key should match this which it does and then the client or the subject key ID is very different. So that's one of the things that we would like to put in because this is sort of something that's expected and it helps with um, verifying the certificate. Now there's one other thing we should put in as how the certificate should be used. And this is gonna say that this certificate can be used for signing keys and as a CA, and this certificate can be used for verification. So let's do that in exercise six. So let's start with our issuer, or, right, the CA. And so we want to be able to say how this certificate should be used. So some of the things we might want to put in is um, set the fields we would like to set, additional fields we would like to set, is for this issuer cert, there's a key usage field, and we should be able to set that to something like X509, that key usage, and we want to say it's for certificate signing. So um, that is going to help restrict how the key can be used um, and of course make it obvious when you do print out the certificate what was the intent for the certificate so not minus but rather equal and there are number of these other fields and feel free to look them up i don't know all of them but i'll give you some information at the end um, where i got some of this information of course did some research too on um, stack overflow of what fields i should set the minimum set of fields basically um, some other fields for the issuer that we might want to set on the issuer certificate is some basic constraint and um, in the Go documentation it basically tells you how this should be set um, if you click on this and then click on the documentation here um, there's this nice long blurb 
um, here that tells you how to set um, basic um, constraint. And so I basically read it like five times before and then did some more research. And so we're going to set that to true. And then we're going to do issuer that is CA. Again, we're saying that oh, this key usage is for signing, but there's this field that, could, that is a Boolean. And of course, this is should be set to true because this is what this certificate is. It's, it's a CA cert, right? And then issuer that max path. Um, and again, that's the documentation I just showed you. And um, certainly definitely check it out and do some research of I don't understand myself exactly what the max path is but maybe that's if you have intermediate service kit and so on um, maybe that's when it come in to play um, there's another field called max path linked and that's an integer so this max path link zero is true implies that max path linked is zero so anyway uh, something I have to do some more research on but anyway we want to set these on the sort key um, a certificate uh, ca sort and then on the client we should likewise say how this client certificate should be used so um, one of the fields that we used previously was this that the dns names right and this represents the different host names that you can use for this client so in this case we only have one name, so that's, that's going to be the host name. But if there were other names, we can be like, you know, host two. Let's say this host has uh, many names that it can be reached on, representing different interfaces, for example. Or um, then you can set those other na multiple names here. And um, the other thing we want to do is also set the client um, key usage here to see how this key can be used. And this is um, an integer field, but you all those different um, key usage, you can just um, mask them. Key in Cypherment, something like this. And then there's still some other extended usage. Um, there is extended key usage. And no, we didn't specify an email ID um, here. So something like this. Um, this one is a slice value. Um, but basically, this is just saying how we can use this um, this key. And you can also specify email um, as part of this um, certificate. OK, so these are some of the fields, the some of the key usage properties that I research and I've added. Um, definitely do your own research to see if there are other extensions that you need to add, depending on how you I'm going to be using the key, but I find that these were enough for the client to be able to authenticate um, and have the clients use this to authenticate with the server and the server to be able to um, prove its identity. And the issuer, again, this was enough for me to be able to use this key to sign, a, um, to use the certificate to sign other certs that were valid. And so with that, let's go back here and um, let me just cheat a little bit here because I'm tired of typing in two shells. So I'm going to type clear. Uh, okay, so this, um, so C L E R clear. And then I'm going to go back up a few to C um, to exercise six and then my cert. And then um, let's do this. Okay, um, I probably, let me remove the pem file first, rerun, create that, and then I'm going to do open SSL. And so we'll see what's different this time and open SSL. Oh yeah, there we go. And so if you look, you can see, well, up at the top is just all the same thing that we had before, um, the differentiation trend for the two certificate, but then here at the bottom, Notice the difference. Here we have this extension and it's telling you that our key usage critical certificate sign in. Is this a CA cert? That's true. The path length is zero. If you remember, because path length is zero when we say path length zero is true. And then we still have the um, key ID for the subject and the authorizer. And here on the other side, we can see that our, for this critical information, we can see that our is different than this certificate. 
Here we can see that oh, this can be used for digital signature, for key encipherment, and um, you know, to for TLS, right? This is trans um, transport layer socket, which is what we want to use, securing our communication between a server and a client, and then email protection. So if we want to encrypt email, so that is what those um, options that we added to the extension, you know, the, how the key can be used. And of course, we still have our old key ID and so on here. So that's how that showed up. So now it's time we've, now we have valid keys, um, certificate, sorry. Now we have valid certificate that can actually be used. Before we sort of have valid certificate, but if you try to use them, it would not have worked. So now let's write a server that uses this key, this sort of key and certificate um, to set up a encrypted um, socket. And then we'll then write a client that connects to that server. So let's do it. Exercise seven, close everything. And in exercise seven, we've already done all the my key, the certificate stuff. So the CA stuff. So now let's do host minus A1, for example. And we'll now write um, a server. So main that go, package main. And it's very, very simple um, to write a server and go so that is uses um, main so our server needs its sort and private key so let's create um, some variables to get that and we will store that in my sort um, file name and my sort uh, my key file name once we have the file names representing where our search and key is stored then we can then start creating our web server and so we want to print out a message that says we're going to be listening on a certain address. And so that address is going to be, uh, let's do address is equals to um, the host name, which is in this case is going to be host A1. And we don't actually have a separate host, but I'll show you how I fix that soon. And then we want to do an HTTP handler and this is just going to be listening on this um, path or this pattern. And for that, we're going to create a handler function, which is very simple. Our handler function simply write, hello, this is a secure connection when any clients try to read something from the server. And to actually create the server, well, we just start and listen on a TLS connection. So we just say HTTP listen and serve TLS on this address. And now we give it the file name for our cert and our key file. Notice we don't have to read them in ourselves. Go takes care of reading it and loading it and all this other good stuff. And then of course, if we have um, an error, well then of course we'll print it out and return, right? But that's it. That's all we really needed, this one line to be able to create a server that's going to set up an HTTPS um, connection once we um, and listen to HTTPS connections. So let's go back here and let's go to exercise. OK, that, that, and seven. And then we're going to go to host directory. And then we're going to say, go run and this is going to tell us, oh, unable to no such file or directory. Okay. So we need to specify our server certs. So we have our cert is going to be up one and down in my CA and it's going to be called host.pem. And then we have our key, which is going to be up and then down and then host that key. All right. And then we can run that. And now you can see our server says it's listening. And then what we can do is use the curl command and try to connect to our server, which is host.a1 and port 8080. And you can see client sends an HTTP request to an HTTPS server. So it knows that it's HTTPS. So now we can do this to signal to curl that we want to do a HTTPS request. And you can see it says SSL certificate problem unable to get the local issuer certificate. Now, the reason this is happening is because we created our own certificate 
and the curl command doesn't know how to validate the certificate that was sent back. So what's happening is curl is making, as a client, is making a connection to our server. The server is sending it back, the certificate that we give it, this, and saying, here, this is my ID. The curl command is looking at that certificate and saying, oh, this certificate was issued by who? It looks at this and says, oh, it was issued by Omnitrust, and Omnitrust, you know, public search is this or whatever. I don't know who this is. It does not have this in my file. So, or I don't have any knowledge of this. So that's why he's rejecting it. Now we can tell curl to ignore or don't check, verify the connection. And now we can see that oh, if it ignores that, then it says, oh, there's a secure connection. But we don't want to. We actually actually want it to use our client or CA cert to verify this connection. That's what we're going to do in code. But I just want to show you that oh, um, we are we do have a server that is setting up an HTTPS um, sockets for listening. Okay, the next part now and the final part, this video is extremely long, is to write our client. So most of this video was about writing our CA cert. Um, the last part about actually using the cert gate, those are very, very easy. So um, I paste this a second time. So let's delete this close this and now we're going to create our client um, our next host which you're going to call host b5 for example and host b5 again main let go package main and function main and this is where we now need to write a client that connects to our um, server so like before we're going to need um, our client to get some information. What our client need is the certificate that it should use for the CA. So our client doesn't need a certificate itself. You can have mutual trust where the client connects to the server, um, the server sends it a certificate, the client sends the server its certificate, and so they both verify each other. In this case, what we're doing is the client is going to get the server certificate, but the client needs to verify that, hey, this server, I can trust it. So we give the client the CA cert that it should use to verify the client, to, get, to verify that server. And so that's why we only pass in the CA cert. And then we can also tell the client that, you know what, I want you to do insecure connection where you don't um, verify the certificate, just like how um, we did with our curl command. Now, in terms of um, the URL to connect to or where the server is running, well, that's just another parameter, and we can just pass that as an argument without specifying a um, you know, argument, a flag, right? And so the way you then set up the connection for the client to connect to the server is that you create a client object. So you say client colon equals. So let me give me some space. So client colon equals and I create the HTTP that client. And the reason why I want to create my own client is because that's going to allow me to configure it. The client has a field called, this client object has a field called transport. And so I can set it with um, this transport object, right? Which I'll have to, of course, initialize. I don't have it yet. But once I have a client, now I can do a re request. I can say um, response, uh, error is equals to client that make this get request, right? And I can send it to this URL, which is basically make it do a get call on this URL that is passed in um, using this client. So client that get, and then of course, if we have error reading that request, making that request, we can um, print that out, and then otherwise, if we successfully made the request, then we can then copy the body of that request, of that response, sorry. We can copy the body of that response. And if you have to close the response. Now, all of this that I'm doing is in the documentation. So if you go here and you read this, it's gonna tell you about how to use um, the get and so on. It tells you that oh, um, you call this, you get a response body, and then the caller should close the response body when they're done reading from it. So that is why you see me do a defer close. So you essentially save a variable and then I do a defer close. 
And the reason why I'm deforming the close is because I'm going to copy the contents of what we get back from our server um, to the screen. So I'm going to use io.copy to say copy the contents of this body to the screen. But I still haven't done configuring my transport yet. Um, the transport is a TLS transport. And so in order to configure a TLS transport, what I need to do is say transport colon equal I'm assigned HTTP that transport. And this is also an object and we could configure to the number of things like timeout and so on. But where, what I need is a client connection object. And this is going to be a client config object. And so this is going to be yet another value that I have to configure. And so I'm going to say config colon equals. And this is TLS package that config. And this is the config that um, where you see what your certificate and all these other things are. And you can use this for a config for both the client or a server if you were creating a server. Um, well, if you have to create your server yourself. And so for this, we can say it out, if you want to do an insecure connection, so insecure or skip, insecure skip verify. That is where we're going to be able to use this field. So we can say, we should skip verification. And we want to tell it the set of root CAs that it should use. And those are going to be our root CAs. All right. Now, this field or this value is simply what I'm passing in to say whether I should skip verification or not. If we do not pass in minus K, then insecure is false. And it means that oh, we should verify our, communication, our connection. How do we verify our connection? We use these root CAs that we're going to pass in. How do we get a set of root CAs? So the thing we can do is actually say root CAs is equals to x509 that new cert certificate pool. Now what I could have done is read in the system the set of root CA that's already on the system and then add a pen to it my um, root CA that we're going to read it from a file. This is going to make sense in a minute. So we create this new cert pool and then what we can do is then say um, IOUtil that let's read file and so we can read in this file, ca cert file, right? And so what do we have? We have the bytes that represent that ca cert in pem format, right? ca cert in pem format, and then we have error. Of course, if there's an error, we want to um, print it out and not continue. But if we can read that, then we want to append our cert the, the search pool that's it and if we fail to do this if we have an error for example it's not okay then of course we can log a message okay i can actually do log fatal at this point all right because if we can't really use it then we shouldn't go on um this is colon equals Now, what I was saying is if you notice, we created a new sort pool and then we read in our certificate, the CA sort that we want to append, or we append it to the sort pool. Another thing we could have done is simply to say that our root CAs is actually from the system. And by doing X509, we can say get the system certificate pool. And once we have the system certificate pool, then we can decide if we should um, append it or not. So for example, if this is equals to nil, then we should definitely create a new certificate pool. And so now we're, our client is actually going to use get the system certificate first, then append it once we get that, then append to it or the certificate we give it. If not, if there's no system certificate or it couldn't get it, then we'll just create a new certificate pool and append to it anyway. So when we do read the system certificate pool, it returns an error. So we don't really care about the error. Yeah, we can just leave it out. Just um, probably more confusing having it there than anything else. 
This is our entire application, the client application that connects to our server. And we can start reading it sort of from the middle. We're going to say we create a client with a certain configure, transport configuration, configuration. And once we have that client, we're going to be execute a GET request to a URL. And the response from that is what we're going to copy to our standard out. What is the transport configuration? Well, it's just a TLS client tr configuration to say that we you have a client that's going to use TLS or transport layer socket for the transport le le level and layer. And so to configure the TLS client configuration, we need to use this TLS um, con object. And that allows us to just load up, load or specify our root CAs. And to get our root CAs, well, we just create a certificate pool and append the certificate, the custom certificate that we have. Our own authority or CA authority certificate file. And so that seemed like a mouthful, so it's best to see it. So I'm going to leave our server running. And over here, I'm going to go to our client application. So um, that's in exercise eight. And we go down to host B. That's our client who pretend is a different host. And I'll do go run. And then, of course, it's going to fail because we didn't give it a CA um, file. And that's going to be um, the CA cert. And then we have to go up. And then I think down to my CA and then my CA that PEM, right? Notice what I'm giving it. Very different than what I use over here for the certificate for the server. The server uses its own certificate and private key. Here the client is using the certificate of the CA to say I'm gonna use this to validate or verify the server. And so we run this and we have um, unsupported, unsupported protocol scheme. Okay, that's because we did not specify a URL. So we should say host that a1 colon port 8080. And we do like that and the no protocol scheme. So we should do https colon forward slash. And then we do that and notice how we have, hello, this is a secure connection. And of course we could have used the minus K option too. Like if we do not specify our host certificate and we do this, you can see, okay, we cannot append it to that certificate. Well, actually, let's, let's go back and let's get the root certificate from the system because if we don't specify a certificate, we'll use the root certificate and that will not have our custom certificate and you'll see we'll fail to connect. And then we'll append, go ahead and do the same thing as before. And so if we rerun our code, notice how, um, what is this we have? Fail to append to that, okay, because we specify, we don't specify a file. So let's see here. Um, actually, if we don't read this certificate file, what should we do? Um, yeah, so let's ignore this. Um, um, if this is not equals to nil, then we should not, uh, only if it's equals to nil, then we should append it. So let's do that. And we're not gonna check to see if it's successfully appended. So if we can read it, then we append it. Otherwise we'll just ignore it and just use the root CA only. And so let's clean up, rerun. And so we fail to make a connection because our application is saying that all oh, the certificate signed by an unknown authority. We could pass minus K to say, ignore this. Um, not sure why that is not working. Uh, minus K. Yo, I'm passing insecure. So, okay, so it insecure should work. Yeah, I'm not sure why that's not working, but if we do include our certificate, um, as you can see here, it works. All right, so you might be wondering, how do I have 
a host A and so on. So on my computer, what I did was I went into the Etsy host file and I added a host A5 and A1 and so on. And so I just append those to my local host basically. And so that's why I can be able to run this application on the same machine and treat it like if it's a separate host. If you don't do that, then when you try to say you want to connect to OCA and so on, it will not work. So on every machine, um, well, I shouldn't say on every machine. On Unix-like machine, you just need to edit this file, host um, the Etsy host file. And um, if you're on Mac, it's just basic sudo, like vi or some editor host.s, um, Etsy the host. On Linux, it's going to be pretty much the same thing unless you're root. For Windows, you, you have to research how to add a host name. I don't remember how to do that in Windows. But that is it. Um, I know this is really, really long. Um, I posted it. That's why I couldn't do it before because it was going to take so much time and I needed time to do it. Um, hopefully, um, by posting it in two pieces, you are able to get through it. Um, all right, now we're at the end. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the video good or bad, whatever, leave the comment and thumbs up the video, please. Uh, of course, subscribe and then tell at least one other person about the channel. Uh, take care. Have a great rest of the day. Stay safe. Bye.